What is up, Obscure Mic people? Bark, coming at you yet again with another condenser microphone. This time from Sarah Monica, as if you didn't know, you better call somebody. The SRBV4. It is a large diaphragm, I believe. Super, super cardioid ceremonic microphone. Ceremonic did send this over, and I do have quite a few ceremonic products yet to test out. I appreciate them for always sending me stuff, even though I am very behind on all the gear they have sent me. I have some cool stuff from them coming up, but uh, I wanted to do this first because this is like some new hotness. I had never seen this one before. Hank over at Free Podcast Tools, he checked it out. He liked it. When I was listening to it, I wasn't sure. I got to hear my voice on it. So we're opening up with the NT1. We're going to do an unboxing. We're going to do some testing. We're going to do all that obscure mic goodness on a less than professional level. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's unbox the SRBV4, see what we got here. The box, I will say, not overly heavy. The specs on the box, signal to noise ratio of 80 dB, super cardioid, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, and all that good stuff. High quality, 34 millimeter large diaphragm, so it is supposedly a large diaphragm mic. Let's dig right in. Top of the box, we've got a pulp filter. Plastic. Goes on the shock mount. Nice. Ooh, simple packaging. I like that. Looks like everything is kind of like pull right out. Yeah, nothing else in there. Boom. Ceramonic SRBV4. Shock mount included. Red bands. 5 8 and 3 8 in the same threading. That's always nice. XLR on the bottom. Shock mount. Got a little bunk cake pan thing looking goobernous here. Ceramonic logo there. Let's go ahead and take the mic out of the shock mount here. There's the shock mount. It is metal. It does feel pretty solid. Not super great, but solid. And here's the mic with its very ceramic bunk cake looking bottom. Nothing super spectacular here. The design is cool, different, neat. But we got a ceramonic logo up top. And on the back, we've got a little bit of wording. I have no idea how to get this thing off. It's got like some tree lines in there. Seriously, not a clue of how you would take this thing apart. It does look like there's a couple notches here and you unscrew there. I'm, I'm not going to mess with all that. But yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels fine. It's different. It's got a design I've never seen before and it kind of excites me a little bit. Mm. Now, in case you didn't know, I am on the Rode NT1 because this microphone runs anywhere from 150 to 250, depending on what kind of package you get it in. And the SRBV1 is gonna run you 199 bucks. And it is wired up and active as we speak with the pop filter hanging down. 199, you say, Saramonic? How do we feel about this? I'm not sure. On my first initial reaction internally in my head, covered full of old man hair, I'm thinking that this sounds um, a little bit similar to the NT1 as far as it doesn't have a super spacious open sound, um, but it also sounds just a little bit boxed in, just a little bit, maybe darkish, maybe flattish, maybe just kind of strange, honestly, compared to the NT1, but not in a bad way, just in a different way. I will say one thing, it is very quiet, seemingly. I'm not getting any noise readout on my level meter. And I was quiet on purpose there because I'm just wanting to see if I can hear any noise that's not ambience whatsoever. And the verdict is, I cannot. So it seems quiet. It's cool. It's different looking. All right. Let's roll with some tests. First, I'm going to throw some plosives into this cylindric bastard. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza. You damn near don't need a pop filter for this thing because that handled plosives like a champ, mostly. Now I'm going to go ahead and get right on top of the microphone so you can hear what it sounds like when you're nary an inch away from the Ceremonic SRBV4. This is what that sounds like. This is interesting. Very interesting microphone sound. I don't know quite what to think of it. It's not bad. It's not great. 
but it's not bad. I am torn. Natalie and Bruglia, torn. Let's go ahead and take the microphone, and we're going to spin it 90 degrees off-axis rejection so you can hear that super cardioid pattern kicking in. 180 degrees off-axis rejection on the super cardioid, which is going to enable more sound to come in the rear. And I think we're hearing that as we speak. 90 degrees on the other side. This is what it sounds like. And back around to the front of the microphone. Let's go ahead and put that pop filter up just so we can make sure that the Peter Piper plosive pickles don't penetrate this microphone's papsule. Capsule. This is uh, this this one's got me a bit confused because I am not sure whether to give this a one or a ten. I just don't know. It is very very interesting, and I I feel like the sound is uh, is it SM seven B ish? Is that what's going on here? You know we're gonna have to try. All right, just for the sake of knowing, here is the SM seven DB, which is kind of a hard thing to get used to saying and. Here is the Ceramonic condenser microphone. And yet again, this is the SM7DB. SM7DB and the condenser. I will say, surprisingly, the condenser is quieter to me than this in my headphones. But the sound is not... Uh, th this is obviously a little smoother, but yeah, comparison of the two. Okay, I'm back on the Ceramonic and I'm going to switch over to the NT1 because the NT1 sort of has a flattish sound to it, but this is more open than the SM7DB and more open than the Ceramonic. And the Ceramonic sounds like this. Little less open, cut around the edges. Very interesting to me. I don't know. This might be worth $199 to you if you want something in between the sound of the NT1 and the SM7DB. This is kind of like they're the middle child of the two. Very strange indeed. Does not sound bad. Do not hate the sound of it. It's not harsh. It's just slightly odd. But again, I don't hate it. 199 bucks though. Is it worth that? That's up to you. That's dependent on if you like this sound or not. That being said, we're going to go to the BB SAR on this one. I think the design of it is really cool. It's different. I like different. I'm not sure how often I would throw this on a boom, but I, I gotta say, it does present something just tonally different than anything I've heard in recent memory. And for that reason, and the fact that it's 199 bucks with a shock mount and a pop filter and a good build quality, and it's seemingly pretty quiet. And I do think it sounds good. I just can't quite figure out how much I like it. But on the BB SAR, I'm gonna give it a seven. I think it's good. I think it's definitely worth buying if you like the sound of this, again, which I find nothing outwardly wrong with. I'm just a tad confused that it's more dynamic sounding than the NT1, but less dynamic sounding than the SM7DB. If that makes any sense at all, I guess that's it. SRBV4 is out of here. If you want it, link is in the description. If you're looking for that all-in-one package with the pop filter and the shock mount with just a little bit of a different flair to it than a microphone that you've normally seen for sale, this might be for you. I think it's pretty cool. Again, just a little bit Natalie and Bruglia torn on this thing because it is different. Obscure mics. See you guys next time. Peace out.